Hello, I'm Martin Kaiser from the Institute of Cancer Research and the Royal Marsden Hospital in London in the UK. Um, and um, I had the pleasure to present this year our poster presentation on the prospective comparison of whole body MRI and FDG PET-CT for detection of multiple myeloma and correlation with markers of disease burden, which were the results of a trial conducted in the UK, the ITIM trial. Um, so bone marrow disease imaging in multiple myeloma has historically been really quite complicated because uh, traditional x-rays and traditional CT scans don't really image the disease itself. They only image the damage to the bones that is caused by the disease. Uh, luckily, uh, cross-sectional imaging, so it's imaging that is really um, uh, imaging the disease uh, activity as such has been developed. Uh, in particular in form of PET-CT, which is probably the most widely applied method at the moment. But whole body MRI is another technique that's also uh, recommended as per current international standards. And in particular, in recent years, um, MRI, whole body MRI has undergone a real step change in terms of technical development. So in uh, developing novel, novel diffusion-weighted protocols, meaning that there are specific added sequences to the MRI scan. Uh, the insensitivity of the scan has been increased uh, quite remarkably. On the right-hand side, you can see a small cartoon, uh, because what uh, diffusion-weighted MRI does, it can measure the difference in density between the tumor cells that are sitting in the bone marrow and the normal bone marrow tissue. That's something that's quite unique to this technique. Uh, on the very right, you can see how such an image looks like. You can really see all the bone marrow spaces uh, that are imaged, and these areas that are dark represent the areas where um, the disease is sitting. Um, there have also been international uh, consensus criteria developed that describe uh, in detail how these images should be acquired and reported, the MIRETS criteria. And it's very important, uh, these were developed as open, open source protocols with international input that can be downloaded uh, by any radiologist uh, worldwide. And they have been adapted to different manufacturers of the scanners. The real advantage of them is as well that they don't need any contrast media. So not even a needle is needed in the arm uh, to inject anything. The patient just goes into the scanner. The scan takes slightly longer than a PET-CT scan but uh, provides really a wealth of um, data. Now, there was a deficit so far in prospective comparisons of contemporary whole body MRI protocols with diffusion weighted imaging and FTG PET-CT. A lot of data has been published, but these often used outdated whole body MRI protocols. Um, so we really set out in this trial to prospectively compare um, these two modalities to define the optimal, optimal imaging um, technique. Uh, this was done in the ITIM trial, um, which uh, was a prospective single center observational study for patients with uh, symptomatic myeloma planned for high dose therapy and transplant. The aims were to compare the uh, contemporary whole body MRI with diffusion weighting and FTG PET CT for detection of disease in the marrow but also to correlate the imaging uh, pictures with markers of disease burden and molecular markers of biology. So can we say more about how the disease behaves, as well as to correlate the imaging at baseline and minimal residual disease after treatment. This is something that will be reported at the later stage. The current talk focuses on the first two points of um, the analysis. Uh, as methods, patients did receive at diagnosis an MRI and a PET-CT, um, if possible, at the same day or within a couple of days. The clinical data was collected, including tumor genetics. Uh, scans were um, double reported to um, reduce bias in a blinded fashion, which means that the PET-CT reporters did not know what the MRI reporters uh, reported and vice versa. For focal and diffuse disease uh, by radiologists and nuclear medicine physicians with extensive uh, experience. And then the adequate statistical pair methods were used to compare the burden and patterns of disease on these two imaging modalities. Patients were recruited between 2015 and 2018 at the Royal Mars Hospital in London. 
and in total 60 patients received uh, a MRI whole body with diffusion weighting and PET-CT uh, in uh, the defined time points. So this is depicting um, main results of the comparison uh, analysis, which really shows that um, for nearly all areas of the bone marrow, so the spine, skull, ribs, long bones, and pelvis, uh, whole body MRI is more sensitive in picking up diffuse disease infiltration, which means if the tumor cells are interspersed equally uh, with the cells of the normal bone marrow, and for most of these areas of the spine, uh, the long bones and the pelvis, uh, whole body MRI is also more sensitive in picking up focal disease growth when the tumor cells grow in a more lumpy fashion within the bone marrow space. On the top right-hand side, you can see uh, example images uh, in the picture labeled A. You see the white area in this case is a area or are areas of myeloma infiltration, in this case, focal infiltration in the pelvis. Uh, this is with a whole body MRI. On B, you see the corresponding PET-CT image, which in this case did not show the tumor infiltration at all in this space where the arrow is. Uh, but then you also see image number C, which is the same patient after treatment. And as you can see, all the white areas have resolved, which shows that there were true areas of myeloma disease at the beginning. Uh, we did this to uh, really exclude false positives, as we call them, uh, on the whole body MRI. And as you can see on the right lower side, um, we can really see if we combine and score um, a um, point system effectively for areas of focal and diffuse disease combined, that we pick up significantly more disease on whole body MRI than on the FDG PET-CT both on a group-wise comparison, but also for most individual patients. Sorry. Um, so there is really, in summary, a higher sensitivity of whole body MRI to detect focal and diffuse disease in uh, bone marrow areas. Now, something that is um, so far um, really quite striking in myeloma um, is that the whole disease course is normally... Um, Managed or disease management is normally staged using blood parameters. Now, these are, as we call, surrogate um, biomarkers. Um, this is the power protein and uh, the serum free light chains. And in intervals, we're doing bone marrow biopsies as well. But of course, these are much more invasive. Uh, and these biopsies are not guided. They're actually um, conducted in an area where it's safe to do these biopsies in the posterior hip. Uh, but um, they may misrepresent. Now, so we are actually managing the disease mostly, apart from diagnosis, based on uh, indirect measures of the disease, something that the tumor produces uh, rather than looking at the tumor itself. And that's quite different to most other tumor entities where actually imaging really looks at the tumor directly. Now, what we looked at in this study here is whether the amount of disease that we can see on uh, the imaging um, uh, investigations correlates with the surrogate markers, um, which could mean that maybe in the future we could use MRI to more precisely define the quantitation of the disease. And as we can see on the left-hand side pictures on the uh, left upper graph, in whole body MRI patients that had diffuse disease infiltration, power protein levels were significantly higher than those without diffuse disease. And that was a feature that was not detectable when using just the FTG PET-CT just next to it. And on the lower part of that panel, we can also see um, those that have diffuse disease detected by whole body MRI when we compared it with a bone marrow biopsy that was performed at the same time as the MRI also had a significantly higher bone marrow plasma cell infiltration than those that were without diffuse disease. And again, that was a feature that could not be um, detected that way with FTG PET-CT. Now, we also looked at whether the pattern of the disease, uh, especially the focal distribution versus a uh, diffuse distribution, was maybe different for patients with different genetic uh, risk markers. And we could find on the upper right uh, panel that particularly that disease that uh, had um, um, diffuse disease by MRI, but no focal disease on MRI, 
uh, was really overrepresented with patients that had high risk markers as well. All patients with high risk markers had diffuse disease infiltration anyway across the group, but those particularly with diffuse disease but without focal lesions had um, a high degree of high risk markers, which really means that we um, can show with this prospective study that there is a quantitative correlation between imaging and these commonly used um, um, markers per protein and plasma cells. Uh, and there is really a potential for direct spatial quantification of this disease, which is novel and uh, could potentially have a lot of uh, potential for understanding the disease better and um, characterizing it differently, maybe identifying even risk groups with correlation with genetics just by an MRI scan in the future. Now, more work is needed to be done, and this needs to be um, um, definitely in the future validated in other cohorts. But uh, as a first view with this new imaging modality, it's really very promising data. Um, this is really just summarizing what I've just, just mentioned. The contemporary MRI is significantly more sensitive to defect, detect focal and diffuse disease than FTG PET CT. The detection of diffuse disease is associated with a higher disease burden and higher risk molecular features. And these results really propose whole body MRI as a gold standard for tumor imaging in myeloma. Now, the direct, direct disease quantitation and correlation of the phenotype could mean that in the future, radiomic biomarkers that in a scan tell us more about the disease than scans tell us at the moment um, could be developed. And the analysis of this trial is still ongoing. And we're looking forward to data on imaging MRD after transplant and outcome. Thank you very much for your attention.